There we go. Hey, hey. Welcome Hi, back. Esther. Hey, hey. Hello. Oh, that was quick. Perfect. So let's see. So what I'm now just going to do is I'm just going to go past everything. If everything is set up correctly. Perfect. So I've got the recorder recording going. Um, we've got some uh, some uh, some good friends in the audience already. So that's great. Thanks so much for joining everyone. Um, we're just going to give it a few minutes, make sure that people are uh, are ready to join. So what How's I did everybody doing? Where's everybody from in the in the call right now? It could be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and for certain so people, leave it up to our imagination. Yeah, absolutely. I know that uh, the person on the Sono Current is of course US based, and for the others, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it up to my imagination. And of course, if people want to uh, just j jump on stage and tell that, uh, everyone's more than welcome, <laughs> of course. Um, let's see. I'm just going to give it a few more minutes. Let's see where we at. I think our discussion of location made someone nervous and they want to protect <laughs> their secret identity. <laughs> They've jumped up. Perfect. You're so trying well, to suss out who I am. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Well, and this is already a, a great point because now we've got G's Max, um, who's responded in the so-called companion channel, uh, making sure that he, he, he tells us that he's in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois. So uh, oh, that's cool. always good. And we might have people just joining and dropping off again. Uh, for certain people, this is their uh, Tuesday evening entertainment when they just want to uh, uh, want to listen in um, just for a bit <laughs> or just uh, join and drop off whenever they find something uh, of interest. And we'll uh, mm -hmm. see people well coming along as we can. So we're at the uh, top of the hour almost. So I would say uh, I'm just going to kick it off. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very excited to be your uh, Tuesday night bedtime story. Oh, superb, superb. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, first of all, well, uh, Lily, Casper, thanks so much uh, for uh, for joining. And um, what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do a quick introduction to the rest of the people uh, listening right now or maybe listening to the recording later on. Yes, you heard it right. This is, again, one of those recorded uh, Clubhouse meets again, um, so this will be made public to uh, to the people on the Modular Clubhouse Discord, uh, on Patreon, and I'm going to share that with the well to the extensive fan base of Channel 37 as well. Um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that you're on your best behavior, right? Make sure of that. Um, that oh, yeah, that's going to be hard. <laughs> Well, it wasn't necessarily meaning you two, but I was I was about the because what we're going to do is we're going to just have a friendly chat for approximately like 20, 30 minutes. And then it's well, we're just going to open it up for a free for all. Uh, so who knows what's going to happen? And then we'll just uh, come along as we as we please. Um, so um, for the people listening to this for the very first time, this is, of course, the companion show to the uh, YouTube channel, uh, The Modular Clubhouse. And today we are joined by another YouTube channel, Channel it's 37. Channel 37. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got Casper yeah. and Lily joining us. So, uh, guys, first off, how you how you doing? Everything OK? We're good. Actually, will you let Lily play us in? She wrote us a Yeah, thing that's too. what I wanted to hear. <laughs> OK, here we go. I can show the world how to patch, it won't be crass. This is Channel 37 now. We're gonna speak with the geeks at Modular Clubhouse. <laughs> That's great. Well, that Thank you so you. much. That's great. <laughs> absolutely fantastic. I think this is absolutely actually the the second time we've actually had live music performed on the show. And the first time when it was any good. Oh, thank <laughs> you. It's the most. It was the most anti-modular introduction that could ever take place. But thank you very much. Well, what I was patching just before we logged onto this call was sounding terrible. I think Lily described it as Russian polka with a four to the floor beat. <laughs> yeah, that might be accurate. Electro, electro polka. That sounds like a yeah. musical genre that is 
probably better left untouched. <laughs> yeah, certainly not one that we want to use as backing tracks for our next build video. <laughs> well, it could be, could be. There might be a, a, a totally, well, undiscovered country of electro polka fans that have been, well, ignored for the, well, let's say, last 150 years. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll keep, we'll keep you might have gold yeah. in your hands there, Casper. So, yeah. I mean, I think it was really successful for Stravinsky when he was trying to make folk music hip. So uh, well, maybe later on in life it paid off. But yeah, oh, we yeah. can try it out. Well, and of course, we, we all had that, that that folk revival around the time when, uh, what was it? Uh, what were they called again? Something, something and sons. Mumford and sons. That Those, those were the guys. Those really yeah. brought, oh, some brought hardcore some... hipsters, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that 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 brought a lot of folk understanding back as well. So f for for me personally, so I'm I'm coming from a from a punk and heavy metal background, and there's nice. always been a a a a a, a, a subgenre of folk metal where you had all these oh, um, imagery of Nordic gods and and goblins and all of that. But then when you started to hear the well, the the folk influences within Mumford and Sons, and of course later on also in the um, um, in the the Boston uh, Celtic punk like uh, uh, Dropkick Murphys and the likes as well. So at, at that time, I thought, well, okay, folk has got to make a big comeback, but it never really felt through. But we might have something with your uh, electro folk <laughs> then. It's nice to hear that you're from this punk background. I resonate with that. I was a bit more of a goth, so I'm not sure we would have got along in high school, but... Uh, oh, probably. I, I played in a black metal band at the time, and that, at that time, black metal and goths went hand in hand, literally so at the, that time. The cool thing about, <laughs> about those subcultures is I think that DIY featured very heavily in all of them, and mm -hmm. that's something that we've really embraced. And it brings me back to the days when I would be you know, working on outfits, costumes, all that kind of stuff. Or like to look super gothy at these goth parties. Yeah. Only now we're building synthesizers. <laughs> yeah, but I I, I have to uh, recognize that immediately because that is something where from the from the goth subculture, and I'm 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 at no means a um, uh, an expert on that because I what I typically did in high school I typically dated goths, so I was <laughs> a bit exposed to it. But wanted to date them. That's why I became one. It was never very ah. successful, though. <laughs> yeah, you Perfect. have to wear the the costume of those you're trying to attract. It's a survival that's thing. That's true. Never that's very so, successful, I, though. Yeah. Well, I was in a band, so they typically it was the other way around. They wanted to date me back then. <laughs> but still, oh, I wasn't. I, I I wasn't that that successful in recognizing that. So uh, that's that's the whole other story for a different podcast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be like the love and relationships edition of uh, no i was totally blind to this i was totally blind to anyone and then of course you, you know what happens five years later you, you 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 come to that conclusion oh that's what they meant oh geez yeah. i totally yeah. missed that totally <laughs> oblivious <epiphany>. yeah. <laughs> so but we're we regressing and i guess i guess so, the theme of regression is a little bit present in everybody who likes to tinker with electronic toys I think and so talk too. Talk about their electronic toys on late night podcasts. Absolutely. absolutely. Now you're, you're absolutely spot on there. Um, so, so first things first. Well, of course. Well, now we've we've known a bit about what your musical upbringing has been, Casper. Um, uh, growing up, going into the sub the, the goth uh, subculture. Anything else? That, that that led you to that. So how has that evolved over time? And and once we've got your um, musical well evolution laid out then we yeah. want to dive into lilies as well oh absolutely i mean she's professionally trained in this stuff but i also have a, a deep relationship with music so when i was i think 13 um mm -hmm. i was first introduced to modular synthesis which is very Already early i think compared wow. yeah compared to many people so the reason this happened is parents wanted to give me a musical education but I was never very good at any instrument and we had this community college where they taught night classes and they had a pamphlet and it said modular synthesis I had nice. no idea what that was but it sounded awesome and my teacher Roland Kout was writing patches for the at that time I think pretty new um, Nord modular system it mm -hmm, was a mm -hmm. digital modular system 
And he taught me so much. And then I kind of built a very small setup. I was working with Reason at some point. Yeah. And then I was working with Reactor and Cubase. I kind of kept doing this, but I always felt guilty for never finishing songs. So I spent more of my time collecting records, uh, DJing, organizing parties. A lot of this was in the kind of industrial noise, EBM, dark electro mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. direction. Nice. And at some point I lost interest in uh, DJing and also kind of lost sight of my musical passion. And meeting meeting Lily was kind of transformational because she is a professional musician. Mm -hmm. So from the moment we met, uh, there was always music in the house and it mm -hmm. stimulated this spark of creativity in me again. It reignited and now, it actually. That's yeah. right, that's right. And through, through the channel, um, we release original background music with every video we make. And a lot of that is stuff that I initiate that Lily helps me work through and finish. And sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes she has an idea and I come up with some some stuff to add to it. So yeah, meeting Lily has really helped me bring more music into my life, for which I'm really grateful. So essentially you have then become each other's muse. Absolutely, yes. I, I mean, I also paint portraits of him in our spare time as well. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over the walls, Jesper. You should see your house. Oh, perfect, yeah, perfect. It, it's, a, it's very lucky that we have, a, like, we have different vocabulary in music. So where my language um, stops, his begins. And so we can really fill in, in uh, different areas of our knowledge. And so we kind of we fit each other nicely in terms of what we can bring to the table and create together. It's very, um, it's very unique and it's, it's an incredible opportunity for me. You should share some of your story because it's pretty. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that I wanted to follow <laughs> up because what I'm now interested in is if you, what, what, what you've already described there, Lily, is of course something that uh, when I talk to some people about, okay, we're going to have you, you guys on the show is they've said, well, okay, well, they are so natural and they are so real and what what you now describe is that i like to call it synergy because making sure that where you well on the one hand you uh, complement each other uh, but then of course combining those parts to become something bigger that's of course something that is very well um very common within music where people just strengthen each other where things start to resonate and well how did that come well, where did you come from from a musical upbringing uh, lily Mm, uh, thank you for asking me this question. I uh, was I born into a family of uh, incredible music lovers with um, really eclectic tastes. So I was really exposed to everything from um, early music to uh, romantic classical, um, the especially like the grunge uh, rock scene in mm -hmm. uh, Seattle. So we were like Jimi Hendrix, Nirvana, Alice in Chains. My mom really loved the Nine Inch Nails. Uh, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> secretly, she would go out to the car and listen to the Nine Inch Nails because my, my dad didn't really feel that as like a four-year-old, <laughs> the lyrics were good for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, there are some, some lyrics that come to mind that I wouldn't play for my kids either. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and then they introduced me to jazz and I we, we grew up also with a lot of instruments around the house so I wanted to play everything and I I kind of did and at a certain point they had to they had to rein me in because I was busy playing uh, piano and flute and jazz trombone and and singing and playing the bassoon awesome. and uh, I found my I found my love for the bassoon and it ended up being um, something that was very natural and it was kind of my ticket to make music my life. So I was mm -hmm. able to get into the conservatory in Amsterdam and there I was exposed to, you know, it's a really wonderful institution and they have people from all different backgrounds and also pursuing really different kind of artistic studies right next to each other. So mm -hmm. it presented this incredible opportunity to like become friends with the people in the lives electronic live electronics department yeah. and i was so inspired by what they were doing and sometimes i was collaborating and doing performance pieces with them where my bassoon was actually um <laughs> triggering different electronic sounds and having you know 12 speakers around me and i got super hooked on this and i i also thought okay 
well, I have no idea how I could use this stuff. I don't understand this cognitive approach <laughs> to music so much. So when I met Casper and he had this, like I came into the studio in, our, uh, in his house and there was this, all these wires in this incredible <laughs> modular case. And I was like, oh my God, he's doing this. Maybe he can teach me. And um, I was so incredibly excited that now I, someone I really loved and like was like, okay, I could, I could see this going somewhere. We can, <laughs> we can, um, we can work on this together and we can meet each other in the middle where we, where we are lacking and where we can give. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. from there, it's, uh, Jasper has been a huge part of my journey there and, um, actually enabling me to become more fluent in this and helping me along the way because um, I'd only had some early exposure with my uh, live electronics friends. Mm -hmm. What's really remarkable to me, um, knowing Lily, is actually two things that she didn't mention. One is that she basically eloped at 14 to go to an intensive boarding school for music. Yeah, she was that true. passionate. I strong armed oh, wow. my parents into this. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've like managed to get a, a quite a big scholarship, and I, I, I basically made a like a PowerPoint presentation actually for my parents. Oh, no. I was thirteen, and I was like, "Look, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to be a musician. Uh, I need you to support me on this and trust me." Mm -hmm. And they were they were incredible and beyond supportive in, through the, the entire process. And the other thing that you need to know about Lily that is pretty amazing, considering that she's now making electronic music, is that her parents kept her away from <laughs> electronics, like completely. So we had to start everything from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really have access to a computer for a very, like, until I was a pretty, like, a late teenager. And so mm -hmm. I had no, I mean, I joke that I just learned how to send an email <laughs> because <laughs> that's what it feels like, this incredible lack of fluency. So, yeah, there's a, it's, a lot has been learned in a short period of time, thanks to Casper but as well. I'm pretty computer yeah. literate, but yeah. I also had to fight my parents for it because they thought it was bad for the brain. But <laughs> nowadays I do everything <laughs> with a computer. I work with a computer. I write software for research. Mm -hmm. uh, I compose with a computer. I make the videos with a computer. So... So Happy they've, they've come around. Have they, have they apologized to you yet? Or? <laughs> I think that part of growing up is uh, relinquishing the hope that your parents will ever <laughs> apologize for their actions. You have to be the bigger man, unfortunately. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that, that's yeah. absolutely true. And that's something that, uh, well, uh, personally, I've, I've, I haven't struggled in that department. Um, I've come from a very tax savvy uh, upbringing. Uh, but I do recognize these these stories, of course. But then mm. the question becomes is not being exposed to um, to let's let's call it advanced electronics. So not being soiled to maybe use that word even. Um, would that then even instilled a greater interest or uh, natural um, um, interest into how these things work whereby you are maybe capable of understanding the basic concepts within modular even better that's a long question to ask but mm. i i'm just intrigued about the uh the psychology and the the human drive to keep on growing and better themselves and how you then approach that from different developmental approaches in life where you where you can be exposed to electronics from an early age um so i've got i've got two kids uh mm, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're five and seven and they are absolutely com completely computer literate so they can do mm. anything that they want at, at their age um, but know. that does mean that they might not have the the inkling for going out and understand why a, a light bulb lights up that we might have had early on. So I'm just interested what your views what your views are on that uh, on that topic then as well. Did that indeed bring you to where you are right now? Uh, that's a that's a really interesting question. Is it like you want to know if we were craving the forbidden fruit kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> Almost, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Oh yes. Well, I don't know. For me, um, I don't think the that um, the off limits uh, mm -hmm. element uh, of electronics made it more appealing to me. It, it actually, to be honest, it felt um, 
it felt just like an insurmountable obstacle. Mm -hmm. And it was only when I was exposed to people who uh, I related to that they were able to make me see that this is not the case. But I think um, my brothers had a diff very different experience. For example, growing up, they were exposed really early to um, technology and are in excellent programmers right now, actually. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I also kind of felt like... Um, I don't know, there there was an element of um, sexism in it with my parents that also kind of put me off or unintentional, oh, wow. I would I would say. Yeah, but um, so I don't know I don't, that's a kind of long winded uh, mm -hmm. way of saying that uh, I don't think it made me crave it more. It actually mm -hmm. became a greater obstacle yeah. for me. But did it, did it then empower you to understand these these concepts from a more well, from a more elemental approach? Um. Actually, yes. Uh, also, because I find, for example, like the ideas of sound theory mm -hmm. fascinating. And so, so seeing where, you know, if I can understand it from this basis level, it can be something that's internalized in the way that um, when I play a note on my bassoon, I can understand or really, I can really understand what way I play is going to create more overtones or not, mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. And I would love to have that kind of fluency. And I also see how that knowledge can translate to playing um, something, an instrument um, on a higher level as well. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Cost, do you want yeah, to yeah. I, I like this question because it kind of focuses on the natural curios curiosity and the um, lifelong learning aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure if you know this, but I'm a scientist by by mm -hmm. trade. I did my and research. Did. <laughs> <laughs> Is what everybody on Facebook says nowadays. Absolutely. But I actually do research every day, day in, day out. Um, I'm an assistant professor of statistics with a background in developmental psychology. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't choose this very competitive, underpaid, hardworking profession if you're not inherently curious and uh that's academia for you right yeah it's academia <laughs> and um learning more about modular synthesis and about music you know it's an endless journey because it's something creative that you're learning in a way like mm -hmm. you can you can learn the physics you can learn the electronics engineering but in the end it all serves the purpose of of creating music and that's an endless learning journey so this is just one of many things that i've uh enthusiastically poured my energy into as i strive to keep learning new things. And what I love about the channel, actually, channel 37, is that we invite people to become part of that journey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, we really know very little. I mean, we both have some things that we know a bit about, but in the grand scheme of things, there are other people better equipped to, you know, educate people. But I think what we can do very well is let people know, listen, this is where we're at. We know some things, we don't know other things. Join us as we found, find out more. Yeah. And maybe we encourage other people to take steps on that journey as well. Yeah. And that's, of course, yeah. a journey that, that that's, of course, something that a lot of people are embarking on right now as well. So um, one of the things that we do see within the overall Eurorack modular or a DIY synth community is that it's it's ever evolving, uh, not just from a technology standpoint, but also from a people standpoint. People do get drawn in, and they they then look at people like you to well, okay, well, what kind of a, what kind of a guide would I feel comfortable with following along uh, on that journey as well? And then certain people will follow people like like Divkit, for instance, and some people might say, well, I I just love what Casper and Lily are doing. And I think that this is not mutually exclusive because mm -hmm. there are Absolutely, different yeah. voices. And I watch so many of these different synth guys. Like, I love what you're doing on your channel as well. Um, oh, thanks. One thing I've noticed is that many people in this community have great voices. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's one well, area yeah, no, where well, I think... Well, now you say it. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> They're incredible. I, I wonder if that is... if the the synth community on YouTube is not some kind of ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually feel that. I think they're just doing the synth stuff to promote their yeah. side channels that they're getting some. Uh, but but basically, what I mean, like all these channels are complementary, is that you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is a synthesizer? It's it's a bunch of oscillators, amplifiers, filters. Um, 
you know, there's only so much you can do. But what we see out there in terms of um, YouTube content is people's perspectives on it. And I think it's nice to have some complementary perspectives. You know, if several That's people true, absolutely, yeah. demo or build a unit, you can watch them both. You can make up your mind about if you want to invest the time or money to buy or build it yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, and we, yeah. we love like, um, well, I, I will speak for myself here. I, <laughs> I really love that um, I, we're showing like some that we're just noobs to, uh, to, to in the YouTube world. And I like when um, when I make a mistake in the build, that's something that we talk about and include because I think with for other beginning DIYers, they might make a similar mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to learn from that and uh, be prepared to expect something like this to go wrong and to know that there's so many um, there's so many platforms where people are uh, often quite eager to help you and it's such a Absolutely. caring community. So yeah. stuff is going to go wrong and you're going to figure it out most of the time. That's something actually that really drew us in. It's a sense of community. I, I really respect what you're doing, building this community through the modular clubhouse, like this Discord server. And others are doing something similar. Yeah. Um, we met Manu from Befaco in Barcelona, and he has done so much oh. to, uh, in the early days for he's community building. He's a godsend. He's, he, he, he's, he's saint-like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so there are many people who oh. deserve to be credited for this, but just an oh. illustrative example. Um, we went to an event called Museum Night, uh, which is a festival that takes place in museums in Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. And there was a show and a musician had a modular synth set up. So we can just walk over and start talking with him. And there's this sense of camaraderie. Yeah. And that is what I really love about this. Like it's people who care about music, people who care about sometimes building the stuff that they play, you know, community. Absolutely. And I think that's I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. So I started the, um, the my modular journey started around January of this year. And um, and the only thing that I've I, I got up until now is just great positive feedback and people offering their help, offering their advice. Um, absolutely, the, the, com- the community is so warm. And I think that that's, well, that, that'll just keep evolving. So if, if I may then ask a very cheeky question. So <laughs> once you guys were doing all these great things, so what then actually sparked the idea? So why don't we just record ourselves while we're doing this and put it on YouTube? Where, where did that idea come from and how did that take shape? I can tell you very specifically. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> because we are lockdown lovers. We met during the, during the oh, lockdown course, in the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we spent a lot of time together and there wasn't all that much to do. So... I had uh, I had started already buying modular uh, modules basically, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the first module that I bought was from a guy called Xander, uh, who was building them himself. And he tried to encourage me, but I was having none of it. I was like, no, I don't have the time. My work is too demanding. Mm-hmm. And then the lockdown came, and then I met Lily, and we were sitting around the house and there's only so much that you can do sitting around the house together we need something intellectually <laughs> stimulating and then we watched this let's keep it pg-13 by, um, right please do <laughs> we watched a documentary by cook who who visited uh the guys from bustle i think you have them on next week perhaps or pretty yeah, soon I anyway think next week or the week after let me just double check that real quickly and that's the first time that i saw just how tight knit this community could be but I, it's also the first time that i realized how bloody entertaining uh videos about this subject could be he did mm-hmm. such a great job with that documentary so i said to lily why don't we start building some synthesizers and put it on youtube <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest this was really hard for me because i'm extremely camera shy and uh, i'm very uncomfortable speaking in front of people so this was quite a process that uh, mm-hmm, unfolded mm-hmm. but Oh, it was so I'm so glad that that we went for it and that we we pursued this together. Yeah. I can imagine <laughs> Come for the sins, stay for the people. Yeah. <laughs> that's mm. a great that's a that's that's a great piece of a comment that you put there, uh, Casper. Uh, mm. Come for the sins, stay for the people. I might steal that because 
Well, well, Who's going to be the official modular yeah. clubhouse slogan? No, well, not not, not, not necessarily. But I, I love that, and I want to uh, I want to uh, take take a, a bit of a peek at that because one of the the funnest things, and and that goes back to your uh, previous comment about well, people within the well the synth YouTube environments have great voices, and I've got a, a friend of mine. He has no interest whatsoever in in synthesizers uh, but he just likes to listen to me and other synth youtubers speak and just to fall asleep to <laughs> so it all, all so there you've got your asmr and and maybe also yeah. well some some of the well the 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 well the character developments that you might see there as well so that's yeah. that's interesting yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's also something about, you know, these videos of learning how stuff works. That's just freaking fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Similar. Anyone who's curious could yeah. could be drawn into this world just because of that, I, yeah. I think. Yeah. And we I think a, a lot of voices. people started doing this during lockdown as well. So uh, I think that I, I, I'm, I'm guilty of that as well. I, I actually just, I was bored of my well bored of my behind let's just call it like that and i just said well let's let's buy a a diy synthesizer kit so i bought the nts1 and that's mm. on the one hand the best decision i've ever made and depending on other people they might say it was the worst decision i've ever made but it is exactly how you say well you want to be exposed to something you want to get into this community you want to um, and you also want to give back as well at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were also hoping that this content that we're creating would help other people get through that period. You know, mm -hmm. not everybody has the the money or the time to build synthesizers themselves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but at least they can vicariously enjoy. That. So that's why we try to make the videos a little entertaining as well. You know, they should be informative, but also entertaining. And that's where the, oh, the terms uh, entertainment came from, probably. Then. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and be prepared. They're just going to get weirder and weirder. We have some uh, crazy video coming out soon of the imp. So. <laughs> oh, great. Well, on the, one, on, on the other hand, you already had, had, had my good friend Paul on the show already, so it can't get any weirder than that. So. Okay. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I love Paul to pieces. He's a great guy. He's um, the best. <laughs> he really is the best. He really is the best. Um, mm. So once you once you started your channel, so what was the initial response like? So um, were there specific people uh, reaching out to you, uh, helping you out with the specific pieces of feedback that you found really useful? Um, any any sort of feedback that you might have for the people listening at home? So if they want to dive into DIY or synth YouTubing, what they can use? Oh, this is very meta. So we're no longer talking educating people about building synths but we're educating <laughs> them about building a youtube channel about building synths <laughs> well or maybe even how do you how do you give back to the community as well so that might also yeah. be a part of that question well, that's a that's a good point because we're heavily indebted to several people um i have to acknowledge uh tom from three tom um who released mm -hmm. the fantastic ms22 filter yeah. we bought that filter it's um not a cheap kit but we really love it it's so worthwhile but he uh, took an interest in what we were doing with the channel and really helped us out with technical support with uh, marketing support so and uh, yeah, he even gave you a lesson on uh, electrical engineering. Is that's that right? right? Yeah, oh, that's right. I had questions for him, and he said, "Just you know, get on Zoom or whatever." <laughs> and he gave me a one-hour lecture about <laughs> electrical engineering. So that's that was great. great. He really knows his stuff, by the way. And another person who's really helped out is uh, Stein from This Is Not Rocket Science. Yep. Yeah, he's a local here in Amsterdam. Also a brilliant guy. He has an underground lab with a <laughs> tremendous collection of parts. Like he could probably supply all synth DIYers throughout the chip crisis. <laughs> <laughs> and he has like he has C CNC machines in the garden and everything. So he's fantastic. Oh, that's great! Yeah. But perfect. remember, top secret location, Casper. You're going to get people location. too excited about this, and he's going to be raided. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to have that because I still have uh, both Stein and Priscilla. Uh, join in a couple of weeks as well, so I don't want to uh, uh, cancel that uh, before <laughs> they uh, they get in. 
Yeah, so I, I'm I'm doing a bit of the uh, the Benelux uh, story here. Yeah. So Short when tour do here. we have? I think that we've got. Where is it? Um, I saw him in the schedule. And um, two other people who helped us in the early days were Manu from Befak Home of course. and yes. Alex Evans, uh, who made the Plinky. It's not really a modular, it's semi-modular, it's I semi-modular. guess, but it is such a great instrument. So those are people who've really helped us. And how do you give back? Well, we put a lot of time into the videos, so I hope that the videos are one way to give back. Yeah. But I also have this idea that if people help you debug a build, for example, you should pay it forward and help out other people um, with build trouble. Mm-hmm. So um, there's some other friends who are less advanced at this point than us in the modular journey, and I've helped them debug some of their builds. And uh, I see I see that Casper is very active on the Synth DIY groups, offering help also wherever wherever you can. Nice. And nice. asking lots of questions. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. but that's a good that's that's a great thing, of course. Just going out to the um to the community, making sure that you're there and um uh, and as you say, just answering questions. That's where it all starts, right? Mm-hmm. I do see, however, that I've got a problem next week. So I've got both Bastel and this is not rocket science, uh scheduled <laughs> for the same night. Oh no! <laughs> They're gonna have to fight it out. Oh, fun. it's gonna be the best episode ever. Of course, of course. They both have so much to say, though. <laughs> That's true. So I'm, I, yeah. I, 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 I'll, I'll reach out to them and say, and let's see if they are uh, both still okay. And otherwise, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll reschedule one of them. Uh, but let's. Uh, I hope this is not stressing you out too much. Yeah. Oh, it's not. No, no, no. So one thing everyone needs to know about me is I thrive on chaos so mm. i'm uh, i'm i'm a, I'm a, I'm a mate. that's the punk spirit it's the punk spirit but it's also the astrophysicist in me that's totally like okay, oh. well, from chaos comes order and mm. and i'll i'll just bubble up there too and that's just one of the one, this is a great segue of course into other things but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't um we shouldn't elaborate too much on that but what i do want to ask is of course so you've you've done great things of course showing all these diy kits you've shown you've done some tremendous interviews already and then of course the the whole barcelona coverage has been exceptional as well so where do you see the channel evolving uh, towards going forward so um we'll keep building things um what i'm kind of hoping is that we'll be able to build some more niche things Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. things that are a little puzzling a little hard to come by um i want to expand this uh series of interviews that we've done because there are so many fascinating people and not all of them are super extroverted so i think that One thing I really like about Lily is that she's great at asking questions that really get at the heart of what fascinates people and encourages them to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I would like to to have more episodes like that. Another thing that we haven't done much yet is designing stuff from scratch. So I just designed some of my first PCBs. They're just bus boards, but now I know how the software works. We're going to be building some cases. And I wouldn't be surprised if within one year or two years max, um, there would be Channel 37 module. Absolutely. Wow. And You've my, heard it here uh, first, guys. You heard <laughs> it here first. Start saving up. Now now we're kind of, we're, we're stuck with that. We have to. The pressure is to. on. <laughs> yeah, it's it's smart. It's putting a, lighting a fire under our bottoms. But my my goal for this channel is to explore also in, in greater depth the more um, musical element. And so I'd love to have some smaller segments where, for example, um, we take like a famous synth or electronic part from a song and break down what what elements are um, making this up and also how to possibly recreate something similar as a sort of like um, a learning series, educational series. Uh, also for myself, who's who's going through this process right now. Mm-hmm. So that's something I'd love to do in the future and talk about structure and composition and everything. Yeah. Well, as you say, just continuing on that journey as well to make sure that your personal growth both for both of you will become 
the well nowadays we should call it the metaverses uh, <laughs> no. evolution as well so <laughs> i'm not ready for the metaverse uh, I, th- I don't think anyone is uh, with with some exceptions of course but yeah we'll see how that evolves no but I, I i love those ideas i love that on the one hand of course where you say okay we want to take this this diy approach to the next level uh, making sure that well that we might indeed get our hands on a channel 37 uh, branded uh, module or DIY kit, uh, which is mm. of course always uh, very interesting, of course. But at the same time, also making sure that the the educational approach, the more low level, let's call it the music musical theory one oh ones, those are yeah. really important as well. So yeah, it, it, it'll become a. <laughs> Well, hopefully, if we fast forward five years from now, then we'll have Channel 37 being the the central knowledge hub for anything modular. <laughs> no, I very much doubt that because we have no business model behind this. It's just a passion project. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. That's see how a path how the biggest pro, how the biggest company started, right? You know that. Mm. Yeah, but I don't. I don't really see a path <laughs> no, towards that. Not. Like I have a, um, a very demanding career. Lily is growing rapidly. I mean, you recently graduated, and I, already I, yeah. you have so many projects. Yeah. In music. <laughs> exactly. So it will always be something that is a little bit, a little bit improvised, a little DIY. As my mother mm. would say, it's made with love. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's it's important to preserve that love by also not putting too much putting too much pressure on it and allowing it to be something that's like a fun and uh yeah. and, a, and a relaxing break from our, our normal lives and work yeah. mm-hmm. and, and it's supposed to to stay fun as well it doesn't need yeah. to become a chore or a, a responsibility or a uh, a commitment uh, at that point in time the only commitment you should have is towards your own enjoyment of the things that you do Yes, but we're both fiercely loyal, so I think that this is we're going to be in this for quite a long time. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a a reminder in my calendar for for five years from now, and we'll do this, <laughs> and we'll talk in the meantime. Don't you worry. But in five five years time, I do want to uh, uh, to reminisce and think about this this first interview, and we'll see uh, what it um, <laughs> what it has brought you. Uh, That'll so be fun. I'll be just more gray hair, honestly. <laughs> well, m- more gray hair. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be guilty for, for that as well. Um, <laughs> so right now we're at 41 minutes. So that's already 20 minutes past the, uh, past the hour uh, that I said. Okay, we're just going to open it up for Q and A. Um, so if, as always, I do want to open it up for anyone. So if you've got any questions, comments. Um, if you want to, well, just, um, well, maybe just, uh, say and share your undying love, uh, for anyone here, uh, or to anyone <laughs> listening back home, just use this time for that. Uh, but we'll just keep on talking until that happens. If you are unable to join the stage or unwilling, uh, please feel free to, to, to uh, well, ask your questions in the companion channel but we already have christian join in christian welcome how are you doing hey uh, everything all right yeah thank you great uh i mean obvious question but i came in late so maybe you asked it already but why channel 37 Ooh, <laughs> mm, good there question, we go actually yeah go so i i saw this um kind of article i think on vice about how channel 37 is this band of noise that is kept free of regular television programming um and it's kept free for kind of scientific purposes mm-hmm. that's what those, i ho- hope that it was based on that's cool yeah those <laughs> concepts of of noise and entertainment and science they all seem to relate to the topics that we want to address in the video so i thought it's perfect yeah super cool yeah perfect name Great. It's also a bit of timing because what we talked about with Jasper is that we had seen this documentary by Koku and it inspired us to start a channel. And I think on the same day uh, I read this article, so the name kind of presented itself in a timely manner. Yeah, fits, I guess. Oh, beautiful. 
Well, again, we just don't know how to how to put that into a logo because I'm looking at this beautiful plug that Jesper has for the modular clubhouse. But how do you hmm. represent this band of noise? I I don't know how to do it. Mm. This is a, two, this is two a lines with yeah. noise in between. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you take I if think you, you take you an image, it. the old the old um, television screens, the the white static that you might have. If you just grab that and then just inverse a, a, a 37 on top of that. Um, mm. uh, I've got some ideas. Leave it up to me. Okay, we'll, we'll talk <laughs> later. We'll talk yeah, later. yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got a great yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your, your question, Christian. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks so much. Any, any follow-up? Any, um, any thoughts? You want to know our morning routines? Anything like this? <laughs> no, I mean, no. What's no. on your rider? What kind of M and M's do you demand? Those kind of things. No, no. Please, none of this. <laughs> no, no. I mean, just go on. It's super. It's super. Uh, the the notion of it's made with love is totally like it's super refreshing to see your videos compared to a lot of other. Let's call it synth YouTube in the widest sense. Mm -hmm. Um, it really it feels fine. like it feels like from the heart, like just you know set up the camera and you know talk about this thing <laughs> we made, and that's it, it's just very nice to to get that. It's really kind. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Especially as someone who doesn't DIY, it's super interesting to see you ah, see you so ah. go through it. People, so you're one of the people who doesn't build but who likes to watch, and we talked about this a little bit as well. What's, mm -hmm. um, what do you get out of it? What do you enjoy about it? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I wouldn't categorically say I would never build something, but I don't have I don't have a workspace, and I see that's one of the things. I see you just doing it on a kitchen table, so apparently <laughs> you don't need, like, in many videos you see, like, the people with, with their workbench and their, their big se soldering setup and stuff, and I'm yeah. like, I don't, ha I don't know where to do that. I, I don't have that space. <laughs> so um, I don't know, and I'm kind of clumsy. So that's the other thing that I'm like, mm, I'm not sure if I will not burn my hands off if I try this. Um, if it smells like chicken, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's no. an interesting point, Christian, because um, one of our closest friends uh, has a tremor. So right. she, her hand always shakes a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, she used to know another synth builder, and he was like, "No, nah, you you won't be able to solder." But then we were like, "Come on, just try it!" And she right. built a plinky uh, <gasps> in our attic and <gasps> loves it to bits. So yeah, I mean that's the one I thing. Really like I would I would love to have a plinky, but you you can't. You really, I mean, you can't even get kits. But like a kit is probably easier to to get hands on compared to a build one. So that yeah. would be the one thing where I'm like. I, I would really want to. You'll be to... able to get a Blinky because uh, Alex is going to open source it, so people will be able to have their own PCBs manufactured. Oh, but the, the main oh, wow. The main thing is that you know you can do it, even if you may have to take a bit more time because you're clumsy. You'll be able to work it out. So yeah, there, but see, I think... that's that's cool to 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 watch to see you going through it and feels good. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Anyone else uh, with any any questions? Uh, feel free to uh, to join the channel. So that then leaves the question: What's the the, the worst injury you've uh, <laughs> inflicted on yourself or your partner up until now while DIYing? Oh my Have god! We? we, I think there there's been the emotional element of it. Oh. Which is that we like <laughs> getting super invested into uh, investment into a, a project, and then perhaps the frustration if something isn't working, <laughs> and then taking it out on each other around the house. <laughs> oh um, no! No, I I've had a couple burns to be honest with a soldering iron. Um, yeah, I've grabbed it by the tip, but my fingers are so callous from <laughs> from rock climbing that I don't even burn. I know. So it's are you doing regular rock climbing or bouldering then? Uh, both, both. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Outdoor, nice. indoor, bouldering, anything. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll no, climb I... anything. He'll he'll climb a building. <laughs> you have to stop him. 
Okay, well, it's deeply, uh, listen, deeply listen to Lily, uh, Casper. Listen to Lily. <laughs> no, I, I, yes. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, you can find me in the Boulder Gym and in the Climbing Gym as well every week. So um, oh, that's why I'm cool. asking. <laughs> but yeah. I only took it up. Well, what was it like two years ago or something? So I'm, I'm quite new. I'm still a noob. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are in the east of the country, aren't you? I'm in. I'm near Nijmegen, so I'm at Grip actually. Okay. Okay. And well, if you're ever course, over in Amsterdam, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Over. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll let you know. Oh. We'll and move have... east in about five years to prevent, uh, <laughs> you know, flooding. Yeah. But uh, you will have to. At yeah. that time, I will hit you up and come climb at Grip. Yeah. Well, and if if you're ever in, in the Nijmegen area or in Arnhem, because I Arnhem the Rheinbolder, uh gym is also pretty nice, if you ask me. Um, so we do have a comment here from from Kyle. Uh, he said, "I I once dripped some smolten molder onto my bare foot. Oh, jeez. Oh, <gasps> ah. Oh, how is your foot now? Yeah. Like, what was the recovery like? Did you yeah. ever be the same? That's my question. No, or do you really. get superhero powers? Yeah, wow. Oh, it's you fine. He, he, so he, he replies, <laughs> it's fine now. So, um, okay." Let's see, he's still but did not gain the ability to fly or anything like that. Yeah, you know, but... the phone, our phone sustained an injury, though, because, you know, we do these pan-baked PCBs, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is part of the minimalist philosophy. Um, Christian men- mentioned that a lot of these makers have, like, a really elaborate setup. And um, we don't want that. We don't have the space for it. Mm-hmm. And we're also kind of minimalist. So one of the things we swear by is baking surface mount PCBs in a pan. Um, and I always try to get a better image. So I have my phone camera mounted really close up, forgetting the fact that cameras and heat don't tend to go <laughs> together so well. So at the phone had a catastrophic shutdown and I had to no. put it in the freezer to get it to turn back on. Oh no! <laughs> oh, but still, but it, no it recovered, right? Damage. No long-lasting damage. Oh, um, at least, yeah, fortunately. Uh, mm. And Kyle responded, by the way, on, on on your question. So, how how did it go then? Um, he said it's weird to have a blister on the top of your foot. Yeah, I can, I can, mm. I can totally, I can totally relate to that. So that's absolutely. Perfect. I guess if you're soldering with no sh- with bare feet, then you're too casual about it. <laughs> you're well, like that's a different topic soldering. altogether. But I have to say, I sometimes wear um, like a bathrobe. <laughs> you look like a mad scientist. If it, okay, I'll I'll put I'll paint the realistic portrait. We've got his beautiful hair that's like kind of flying in every single direction. A bathrobe and hunched over looking like a mad professor. Because people comment that we're like wearing suits and stuff. And it's true that I like to wear suits also because we often record these videos on days that I'm recording lecture videos for the university. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when we do the soldering, that's a whole different day. You There's know? a reason they don't show our faces or bodies. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're like doing the PCB bags in underwear and we're doing the soldering <laughs> in, in like bathrobes. We prefer to do that nude, actually. Yes, no. <laughs> uh, now you we kill the whole bake. suspense, Lily. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what's the mm. guy? What's the guy called Pat- again? That, that does is all that the Patreon Patreon Plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's our only fans. <laughs> I, yeah, I can totally <laughs> the see only the. Fans. We have no business plan here. <laughs> Just this. Well, OnlyFans hot solder. Yeah, hot solder, baby. <laughs> yeah, OnlyFans.com slash hot solder. Uh, geez. <laughs> I'm just registering it straight away. Um, no, the thing I wanted to uh, to comment on is, of course, uh, uh, what's it? What's his name again? It's a it's a French guy or a French Canadian guy, uh, Marc yeah, Rebillet. Um, yeah, I was yeah. searching for exactly that name too. <laughs> he's of course he's best known for the let's call it the the morning after jams that he does, and. I, I that's the only the only visual that I now have in mind of you Casper in your bathrobe uh, mm. jamming through the kitchen while you're soldering something I'm that's not sure if you, we should, we'll try to do a tribute we will yes. yeah yeah have you, have you do you know whom I'm talking about or Mark we Rebillet? just googled it we, we just have googled lightning it. fingers yeah oh that's perfect <laughs> he's a he's a fun guy at least I've never that's met app- him but the videos he does I find it really, really interesting. 
Um, so the, con- the concept is completely of the morning after in his uh, his music making? Well, that's always my association with it because what he reminds me of is when you're, um, let's say, when you're 21, uh, you're in your, uh, your, your, your college or university dorm and you've got some friends over, you went out uh, clubbing or whatever you want to do and then the morning after, everyone is just hung over you're just watching a video you're getting some greasy food in you to well to to <laughs> to to ease your stomach a bit yeah and then of course well you have you you'll always have that one hyperactive person there and typically that was me who then starts to do something ridiculous and Marc Rebillet is of course doing that exact same thing he's looking like he's hung over but he is then doing something exceptional and I'm wow. really jealous of his musical talent, of course, because I, I personally, I don't have any talent whatsoever. But it's just, it's the aesthetic, it's the atmosphere mm. that it breeds that I really, truly love. But yeah, wow. just give it, give it, give it, give it a look. Yeah, we will. Yeah, Are, is he paying you by chance? Are you getting? <laughs> no, getting a but cut uh, for Mark Rebillet, if you're ever um, into uh, a a sponsored segment into the Modular Clubhouse. I'm more than willing if you want to join this later on uh, as a special guest, let me know. I'd love to pick your brain as well. <laughs> there we we'll go. We'll check him there out. Yeah. There we'll be we our evening entertainment. Yeah. So uh, as we said, so please, everyone, please keep uh, posting your questions. Um, but there is always a point in this show where I have to do something very solemn and that is of course uh, offering well in this case both of you uh, a chance because i've been able to pick your brains and ask you very um special questions um if you've got any questions for me because that feels like it should be right mm. yes i i actually have a question so i you said that you got started in january is that correct yes ma'am absolutely and what what motivated you to become such an active member of this community? Was it also this this love and openness or something else more unique? Tell me your um, story. So that story is, yeah, on the one hand, so I, uh, what I touched upon earlier is um, I, was, I was getting a bit bored and my wife, she kept telling me, well, one thing you need is you need to have a good hobby. You need, really need to find something that you can... Um, funnel in all that passion and all that creativity that you've got you need to have something you, you need an outlet and what i did around that time is I, I was spending a lot of time and of course also money into getting a good youtubing setup because part of my job i work for a um uh, for for a pretty well significant software vendor um and i part of my job is to make youtube videos so i'll mm. uh, so i've been investing a lot in okay well um this is a nice uh, microphone and i was still looking for another microphone so i was actually on the i think it was the bucks website or something like that and looking for microphones and then i come across this this nt nts1 uh build it your own diy kit and I said, well, yeah, what the heck? I love that. Why not? Um, mm. Because it was like a hundred euros, and I'm like, well, that's that's just fine. I'll ju- I'm just gonna st- I'm just gonna take that dive. And then, of course, one thing led to another. I bought the NTS one, and then quickly followed by a um, uh, uh, a Volca. Then I bought a uh, a pocket operator by Teenage Engineering. I bought the Behringer crave back then uh, before i even knew what a moak mother 32 was <laughs> and at that time what actually happens was the one thing i'm never going to do is i'm never going to get into euro rack because that's gonna that's that's <laughs> gonna i'm not ever going to financially recover from that right mm. uh, so then i said well of course i i kept getting deeper and i got i got pulled into a bit more i bought a neutron i i i started researching a bit more and i i i felt that allure of um Eurorack just calling me in like a like a siren in the night and then i said well 
if I'm going to do this, and only if I'm going to do this, I will need to pace myself. I will need to make sure that if I dive into Eurorack, that I make every euro that I spend count. And <laughs> I then said, well, everything that you buy, you'll need to make sure that you, uh, that you video it and that you start building a community because that way you're gonna pace yourself. You're gonna make sure that you fully understand something before you buy something else. And mm. well, of course, given the background that I had already making YouTube videos, um, I'm like, okay, well, let's let's do this. And I, I had a good long talk with, uh, with myself and of course also with, the, with my better half. I'm gonna do that. And so this has now become my, my, second, uh, my second passion. So I did post a, a video, sorry, a link to my professional YouTube channel uh, as well in the uh, companion channel. So there's a lot of things there, uh, but as I said, it's all about programming enterprise software, uh, but it's just illustrative of what I've been doing uh, up until now. Uh, but that's a bit of the story, how I came to be. And then of course, I, I reached out to people who were uh, willing to help me. And then you get into this great, community and then yeah then you're sold mm. Mm. it's very re very relatable very recognizable can imagine yeah absolutely Casper, yeah. mm. do you have any questions <laughs> yeah <laughs> do i have any questions mm -hmm. um well actually yeah a, a little bit about this community because i understand the need to pace yourself and kind of the need to i don't want to say justify but to make it somehow worth your while right Mm -hmm. So for me, one of the th cool things is that um, before I felt very conflicted about not finishing songs, mm -hmm. but if I'm mm -hmm. composing background music, that's also fine. You know, that's a finished product. So for me, that's how I feel about it. But why is building a community so important to you? Um, that's a good question. So for me is on the one hand, it has to do with the, the, the reasons I already told you about. On the other hand is even though I've been brought up in a very musical family, um, but always from a consumption point of view, we always, we went mm. to concerts. I, uh, I, I saw the, the Rolling Stones uh, play in their last, uh, what was it like 1998 show I've, 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 I've seen a lot of music and I've always been exposed to music uh, but what one thing we never did was actually make music and when I was around what was it um, at a very young age I was exposed to and I, I, I joined some choirs and I, I did a lot of things with my voice uh, but I stopped doing that so when I then went to high school I I, 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 I sang, well, you might not call it singing, of course, because it was black metal, but I started to do a bit more creative things. But one thing that I came to learn about myself is, okay, I can, I can do vocals, that's one thing I can do, but I can't do music, because that's something, mm. simply something I can't do. And that's the thing I said to myself, which is of course a ludicrous thing to say to yourself because I, I now believe everyone can play music. But that thought kept lingering within me. And then when I started to play around with these synthesizers, I, I developed this idea of, well, it might not have been true, but I'm not a classical musician, but I still have something in, in me that, has, that, that needs that creative outlet. So that yeah. then evolves into, okay, well, how do we then expose that? And and just like you say, uh, Kasper, is mm. I'll probably, <laughs> you, you won't see me releasing any songs, of course, but what I do like to do is show what I can do from a musical perspective. And then yeah. if, if you're a bit uncertain of yourself or if that insecurity um, has not become as big of a blockade, you still want to well share that with the world and then i think or believe that the building of a community making sure that the one thing i do very well and that is of course i can take technology pretty good and take that technology and translate that into something that is easily understandable and 
very value driven because that's what I do for 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 my day for my day to day job as well. Is I take very complex problems and I make them very understandable, and I then apply well technology to it, and I then show value. And I think I apply the same things when I do my videos. I take something yes. which is a problem, and I want to break it down into aspects. And at the same time, it does allow me to show off a bit of the creativity I have got as well from a musical standpoint. So it's all, it's all layered, if you ask me. So it's like things coming together and Absolutely, finding yeah. a path to, uh, to create an outlet for this, this desire that you had for a longer time. Absolutely. No, no, absolutely mm -hmm. spot on. Yeah. No worries. There I, whatsoever. What I, I, d I do really appreciate the professionalism you bring to your videos. Like you're, you're a relatively new player, like, like we are, I think, but you wouldn't say so if, if you just stumbled upon one of your videos, because as you describe it, you can really break down um, the functionality of complex instruments and um, make that understandable mm -hmm. and also show people the value in them. I think that's, oh, that's, that's great. really great. Oh, I love to. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you so much, Casper. That means a lot. And it's Thanks. a boon to the developers of these instruments, right? That oh, you yeah. are explaining and promoting them so clearly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's one of the reasons why I love to um, to to work with not just the, um, the 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 better known brands as well, but why I also want well the, the video I've just released today uh, from uh, that was on a module by Nico uh, who goes by uh, Licon. Uh, instruments oh yeah i yeah. think i think he's he's only sold like maybe a couple of dozen modules if if he already has that but the approach he has is so great and then i want to take that and expose that to a greater audience and that's of course yeah. something i Ooh. truly love that's actually something i want to ask about because in your yeah. opinion who are the most promising smaller manufacturers at this point? Ooh, this is really From a smaller perspective, that's a great point. So let me just uh, grab my notes here just real quickly mm. because I don't <laughs> want to undersell anyone that we have. Um, so I've, I'm really impressed with what Nico did on the Mandala uh, that we saw today. And he is um, he's now mm. working on a, on a new module that he's actually if I understood correctly, and, and Nico will probably correct mm. me if I'm wrong, uh, but that's act he's actually developing together with Marianne Hedonia. Um, so that is a a, 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 a big checkbox in a, in my list with saying, okay, well, mm. you are working with people who are really influential within Modular, and you're taking what they need and then developing that into something for the for the masses. That's of course great. So that's mm. one thing I, I truly love. Um, I've, I'm really impressed with what the likes of Noise Reap have been doing from a from a sound design perspective. Um, so I've been, been working uh, with them for a while and they've been really great. But then you also have um, really up and coming uh, brands like Satonix. Uh, so mm -hmm. we've had we've had Jack's on Jack on the show a couple of weeks back. And he's done a great uh, low pass gate and he's now released a low pass filter. Uh, but that is so extremely promising uh, from what he's done and really interesting design. And another one that I really want to point out is, of course, uh, Animal Factory Amplification out of India. They yes, do great things. yes, Aditya. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Another one uh, and two others that I really want to uh, point out as well is on the one hand, I want to uh, uh, make sure that we establish Pete from, from, from CM Modular as, mm. a, as, a, as a great enabler for the, for the community because he has got a great lineup of very affordable uh, modules um, mm. that just simply sound great and will fit everyone else. And on the other hand, I'm also uh, working with uh, uh, Gianluca, um, who sounds Italian and is in the UK, but he's um, he's now working under the brand of MRG. And MRG, I've just got their full voice of modules, and I'm going to be working on the video on that this week and mm. next week. And that is so impressive, where you've got a full lineup 
of modules covering a full voice and yeah. every one of them is 4 hp wide and it's just a bre uh, it's just great to work with and i can mm. just keep on talking about because all of the people that i've worked with mm. are exceptionally well in the things that they do whether you talk about francois from shakmat or or crook yeah. or, or or the, the people from super synthesis um that mm. i've done a video on a couple of months back it's so incredibly enticing so i've never come across a module that i didn't love but that's of mm. course that, that that's me of course but <laughs> everything that i see everything that i touch everything that i play with is well empowering me to do something or to reach a height that i've never even imagined i would be able to reach and i think that's yeah. one of the beauties of modular as well yeah cool it's really nice to hear some of these and a lot of these are actually still unknowns to me so i got some more googling to yeah, do later. <laughs> no worries. but even even the dutch uh modular uh, uh community is great so here we've got a reverse landfill which is like mm -hmm. five kilometers from from where i am uh, yeah who's mm. done great well really artistic things that's the kind of stuff that i love yeah absolutely i really so, like his, his stuff i got to play with it in jan's studio we had a an interview with jan fossurier from the band isoloscope which is nice. a band i used to listen to as a kid because oh, he's wow. also been making music for decades <laughs> and uh, he has a lot of uh, reverse landfill modules i remember the monotropa i think it's called yeah yeah, that's it's one of the, the ones that I got. That to distortion play unit yeah. is absolutely yeah. bonkers. That's the only one that I I actually uh, worked with. Yeah, nice, nice. So we had a few people that kind of inspired us in Barcelona. We had this really transformational conversation with Martin Klang from uh, Rebel Technology, Indeed. and that's oh, a company Martin, that's yeah. been around so long. They created the first Euclidean sequencer for mm -hmm. Eurorack. Yeah. And now Euclidean sequencing is like completely intertwined with Eurorack, right? Everybody <laughs> is using Euclidean sequencers. Yeah. He created the first and he's um, made this kind of platform, the, the Witch and the Magus and the Lich, they're all hardware hosts for software modular synthesizers that can Absolutely, be written in different yeah. programming languages. And that is just such a refreshing way to think about it and to also lure all these mm -hmm. talented developers to come take a look into our community and contribute patches. Absolutely, it, yeah. It's also a way, I mean, it's I, I see his work as, as absolutely being a sort of bridge between the musical and the programming world. So I think it's, it's also... Um, opening up musicians minds like mine who come from maybe a different background that they can get comfortable working with uh, programming or with m different technologies than they were exposed to i think what he's doing is absolutely brilliant because it gives you a really um tactile and understandable way to approach this yeah, yeah. and we absolutely. also really like tom from three tom he is um a, a, a pcb developer by by trade at a very high level and just looking at the first module that he released that ms22 it is so mm -hmm. perfectly over engineered and it sounds <laughs> really radical you know like i can't wait to see what other stuff he's going to come out with uh, does he have any plans on, on new modules because he does but we can't speak about them oh you're on their embargo you're on their nda did you sign yeah. you need to you need to get him on he is yeah. he is fantastic That's he has so many approach. ideas yeah absolutely i'll, I'll make sure to do that because he's been on my list, but I still keep forgetting to reach out to him. Uh, oh, that's definitely of course do. one thing. But um, going back to Rebel Technology, of course, well, there's of course that always that the Bifaco Rebel Technology. Well, let's call it them um, friends with benefits sort of approach that they <laughs> going on. Um, you don't know what's going on there. <laughs> well, I know Manu, so I I, I totally know what's happening there. Uh, <laughs> we took Manu climbing, by the way. Yeah, oh, he's you did! An incredible climber. Yeah, oh, it's good. Lot of fun. Man. Lot we of took fun. him outdoor climbing near Barcelona. There's really good climbing there. Oh, yeah. that's great. Now, well, well, actually, Manu was also one of the first people to uh, to help me out with the channel as well. So he um, he made nice. sure that I, um, I I got a good look at the whole lich, witch, um, and owl 
yeah. ecosystem. And I, I can only echo what you've guys been t telling about that, saying, okay, well, that's a very interesting approach to it. So I've just mm. um, uh, copied some, some of the videos on the, on the Lich and that whole ecosystem and listed that in the companion channel as well for the people at home that want to follow up on that. Um, nice. Oh, that's and that's great. interesting that you mentioned this friends with benefits relationship between um, mm -hmm. Martin and Manu because Martin back in the day um, he's kind of one of the pioneers and he also tried to set up this community around modular yeah um, because originally rebel technologies was presented as kind of a consortium of creators yeah but I think that his strength was really in these completely revolutionary hardware concepts and Manu's strength is really in the community building and the, the production and you know running the business empire and the, co and the commercials as well yeah the commercial side but not commercial in a shallow way but in a way of being able to scale um, yeah. modular and make it viable yeah. from a business standpoint so the fact that they have kind of naturally distributed these tasks between them Martin can focus on creating these brilliant concepts and mm -hmm. Manu is doing community building and running the business side and also empowering people like you mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. who can contribute to that community building. That's really great. It's friends with benefits as you suggested, but you know, <laughs> people taking on the roles that best fit them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and another example is, of course, what's now happening with, uh, uh, with TipTop taking the Bukla brand to the masses as well. I'm not yeah. sure if you've. What 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 are your your thoughts on on that on that? Well, friends with benefits approach. It's great, but they're not DIY, are they? No, absolutely not. No, they they, they Well, I, I've been working with Gur for a while as well. So Gur from uh, Gur Milstein from mm. uh, from TipTop, and he is very much into. Well, we want to make it. We want to make it perfect the first time around. Um, and I don't think that they've ever released DIY. No, exactly. So the reason I'm I'm bringing that up is because we do focus on DIY stuff. Mm -hmm. I call it the DIY it. <laughs> it's like a diet, <laughs> <Yeah>. but basically, <laughs> we're only allowed to uh, spend our money on kids. So what exactly. is then? What 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 is your white whale? What's the thing that you still want to build, but you know it's going to consume you? Ooh, that's Do you have a good something? Question. Ooh, I don't know. I think the Oberhausen is. But the Oberhausen is built, baby. It I just know, but it was a, It felt like a huge obstacle. Mm, I thought it was easy breezy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think that there's anything that's. Um, that's a no, great there, there sound snippet, by the way. Oh, the Oberhausen was a was a. <laughs> was very easy. <laughs> it's easy breezy. Just block two days on your it was, calendar. It was a big boy. I was, I'll say that. <laughs> Belly up, big boy. No, I, I know what I would love to build. I would love to build some stuff by North Coast Synthesis. It's just, it's brilliant. It's perfect. What else can you say about it? North Coast. That's a name I've it's had. Another, I haven't... You haven't heard it? No. It's another, it's another scientist um, who, who designed Eurorack modules. I guess... Con conceptually it's a little bit similar to the Bukla idea like it's it's technically perfect and mm -hmm. a little eccentric you know mm -hmm. so he has this middle path VCO and he has several filters with really unique uh, response curves I would love to build some of that but they're expensive I see that this is so a call I'm for just... sponsoring <laughs> well that's that's yeah. of course so I'm just going to share the link in the companion app there as well so that, that, that anyone else knows what we're talking about north coast mm -hmm. synthesis at first i thought that was another dutch company then but apparently they're from ontario so yeah mm. <laughs> not even close mm. perfect i'm gonna look into that as well well um and have you guys thought about taking on the the black corporation things like uh, uh Deckard's dream or Deckard's voice things like that as well I'm actually not so interested in them. I'm not familiar with them. Um, yeah. I am. So they're basically, uh, this Deckard's Dream is like a CS80 clone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think there's anything super special about their clone of the CS80. It's using really off-the-shelf kind of chips. Um, it's an expensive project. 
And I think that what made the CS80 so unique is in a large part the interface. It's how it allows musicians to play it. So if you just look at the Deckard stream and Deckard's voice and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, we've got those chips. We've got yeah. an Oberhausen, it's great. What what we would love to have is an interface that allows this more intuitive modulation. Um, so for example, a Seaboard combined with an Oberhausen, I think would get you very far. Um, and the Plinky is actually meeting all of our CS80 cravings right now because that also has this capacitive touch interface. Does it make that's sense a, what I'm no, saying? No, that's a great conclusion, actually. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, the reason why I brought up the Deckard's Dream and, and also the Deckard's Voice is because what you typically see is those are projects that DIYers get caught up on and actually being their their white whale that's going to that's going to well that's going to lose them forever um yeah so no i know what you mean and of course robin what, what is his name robin vincent mm -hmm. uh when he started his journey that was one of his main goals right um is that i think it was yeah one of his it could be it could be yeah, yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. So, but it, it doesn't appeal too much to me because I think that if you strip the CS80 of its interface and recreate it with modern readily available chips, it loses a lot of its appeal. And a lot of its original appeal, I think, is due to this more intuitive interface. Okay. But then, of course, then the, the, uh, the Plinky sh shows up and you do get that interface that you want to have. Ah, uh, it sounds dreamy. It's... <laughs> I'm, it it's my baby. I am obsessed with the Plinky. We we I, call it baby Plinky. We call it baby Plinky. Oh, this is this is it's, wrong on so many levels. I know. I know. The Plinky is so weird. For for a moment, I I was super not interested into it because it looks it looks a bit like the Tukra from Tesseract module. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I totally threw them in one pot and was like, okay, that's that's the Tukra thing and I'm not interested in that. And then I saw your video about it and was like, what? What did I, Why did I miss, miss this? It's wonderful. I want one. <laughs> you know what the secret backstory of the Plinky is? No. We'll share this, but that's kind of the last secret that we can, uh, can share. So Alex, the designer of the Plinky, was a really high profile software uh, game developer with a very impressive resume. One of his games um, allows the player to create other game worlds and, importantly, compose music for them. So there was this really elaborate, intuitive, creative music generation engine. And then after one of his projects, uh, he got fed up with the industry and just said, you know, stuff this. <laughs> and out of his own interest, he started making an instrument. And all of these ideas are represented inside of that instrument, which is the Plinky. So it's meant to kind of transport the user into this universe where you can create things as you want them to be. It has super elaborate modulation opportunities. Like it's a really powerful, complex synthesizer. But importantly, it has a, a unique interface that allows you to make sounds that are hard to replicate with another device. And also the personal element uh, is, is extraordinary that it's com it's uh, calibrated to your own touch and it differs also the way it's going to sound from individual to individual. It's, yeah, okay, this is now it's turning into an infomercial Plinky for Plinky. <laughs> Plinky <porn. laughs> it looks so but, playful. It's, mm. it's, it's cute. Yeah. But it's there's, the there's so much expertise behind that little device. It's remarkable. So would you then say that from his perspective, actually taking that frustration that he had from the, well, from the gaming game development worlds and taking that into modular synthesis has been more almost therapeutical or cathartic to, 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 to him? Or was it something that you felt that he felt was needed in the modular community? I think uh, I, I, we both really don't. We can't answer this question. You'll have to. Yeah, we can't speak for. Yeah. For no, him, no, absolutely. But, but I'm, I'm going to get him on, coming, on stage as we're well. We're just coming from a from a place of admiration and yeah. appreci appreciation because what he has really done 
is given a gift to the community. Absolutely, yeah. He contains so much expertise. Even the run that he he made was very underpriced. And like I mentioned before, it's going to be available open source. So you can basically nice. make yours at cost yeah. um, in the future. So it's it's a very generous gift to the community. And well, and especially if he's going to open source it, that, that is, of course, the, 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 the biggest gift that keeps on giving. Mm. Yeah, it's really incredible. And also, I mean, someone might take that idea and, and expand it and run with it. Yeah. Make it and of course, crazier. in that vein, um, you have to mention Emily Gillet, who, you know, oh, yeah. whose open source work has provided a really thorough foundation for, for modular synth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Emily's been the, the queen of making sure that everything has that that open source approach the uh, the the she's been the the godmother for 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 that whole uh oss uh, approach within the community as well she yeah. she was actually the inspiration for me to actually make my videos uh, creative commons as well so i want to make sure that others can actually take my videos and just remix it or use it the way they want uh because i think again that's giving back to the community and then of course you've got other companies whom I'm not naming by name right now can then also take, well, let's call it advantage of. Mm. Yeah, maybe, I guess, if people want that particular flavor. I mean, that's something that um, I, I don't think she was naive when she. Uh, no, absolutely not. It was a very this. thought through uh, approach. And that's, yeah. that's something that it's she's, all... she's def defended uh, yeah. a tooth and nail, of course, why she's done. It's that. obvious that people could then take commercial advantage of that, but mm -hmm. absolutely. That's a choice that's made at the time of, you know, when you license your product like that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, no, good point. Good point. Um, so again, we're almost <laughs> we're almost thirty minutes past the um, the official <laughs> or end time of this. So I, I, I it's truly almost enjoy our, it. It's past our bedtime, you know. We I'm not sure what you what, what you what your bedtimes are. But, it's uh, ten. <laughs> oh no! So I actually kept you up all night. Apologies it for that. It was worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So um, then again, I do want to give you uh, both of you the stage. So this has been the first time I'm actually interviewing. Uh, two people at the same time so this is a this is a world first for me as well um, but any any closing thoughts any pieces of advice any pieces of wisdom you want to instill into the audience I'll I'll just very simply say that it's been a pleasure talking with you um, oh, thanks. I had hoped that there would not would be an opportunity for that and thank you to the people who dialed in. Thank you, Christian, for speaking up. And thank you others for listening. Thank you very much. And uh, my noob advice is make sure that you fit the front panel before you solder the hardware. Oh yeah, and make sure to <laughs> align the red stripe. <laughs> <laughs> that is always the best piece of advice you can give. Uh, Lily, Casper, it's been my pleasure, my honor. I. Uh, We'll we'll keep talking uh, later on, and we'll make sure that um, we can get you on on this show uh, going forward. Um, as said, thanks again, thanks a million. So for now, I would say everyone, please, everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you for our next show, which is next week, and that's going to be an interesting one because it could be either uh, <laughs> Fakla from Bastille or uh, Stein and Priscilla from This Is Not Rocket Science, or maybe all together. So that's going to be an interesting one. Um, from a channel perspective, uh, we did just release, let me just get that real quickly. So we did release two videos uh, recently. One video is indeed on the Mandala by Likaun, um, which was released today. And then yesterday we did release a video on the uh, Dreadbox Utopia. So uh, make sure to uh, give those a uh, well a few minutes of your time. Again, take care, everyone. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank bye bye. You.